రివర్స్ షోల్డర్ ఆర్థ్రోప్లాస్టీ ఎన్టీఆర్ఎస్ యుహెచ్ఎస్ ఎంఎస్ డిగ్రీ ఎగ్జామినేషన్ అక్టోబర్ టూ థౌజండ్ నైన్టీన్ ఇన్ ద పేపర్ ఫోర్త్ రీసెంట్ అడ్వాన్సెస్ ఇన్ ఆర్థోపెటిక్ సర్జరీ ద ఫస్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ వాజ్ ఆస్ట్ రైట్ షార్ట్ ఏసే ఆన్ ద రివర్స్ షోల్డర్ ఆర్థ్రోప్లాస్టీ అండ్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ ఇట్ సో వీ విల్ బి డిస్కసింగ్ the reverse shoulder arthroplasty on following 10 points 1 definition 2 historical aspect of its evolution 3 indications 4 patient's characteristics required 5 contraindications for the surgery 6 the advantages over the anatomic shoulder arthroplasty 7 operative procedure 8 post operative management 9 complications and 10 the survey x classification of shoulder notching so let us start by definition reverse shoulder replacement is a type of shoulder replacement in which the normal ball and socket relationship of the glenohumeral joint is reversed creating a more stable joint with a fixed fulcrum now you can see here this is the normal anatomical shoulder replacement whereas this is the reverse shoulder replacement arthropathy now coming to the historical aspect traditional shoulder replacement known as the anatomic shoulder replacement was developed to treat the glenohumeral arthritis and the consists of resurfacing the native humeral head and the glenoid to create a smooth articular surface to provide pain relief and improved range of motion as you can see in this particular picture that the glenoid the humeral head is resurfaced and the glenoid cavity is resurfaced right and the variations of this procedure have been performed as early as 1883 while most patients can achieve substantial clinical improvement using this approach those with the large rotator cuff tears have consistently demonstrated poor outcomes due to loss of stability provided by these muscles now you can see in this particular x-ray that how the the humeral implant has moved up proximally migrated right so in 1972 u.s orthopedic surgeon john s neil he designed a fixed fulcrum shoulder replacement in which he reversed the ball and socket geometry however unfortunately his design resulted in several early failures and leading him to abandon this concept multiple other surgeons throughout the world subsequently developed reversed ball and socket implants and while some achieved reasonably good results the concept never gained a significant traction until french surgeon paul gramant developed his trompette prosthesis in 1985 and this was further modified into the delta 3 prosthesis in 1991 you can see this in the diagram as the government's reverse ball and socket prosthesis gained popularity and began demonstrating reliable outcomes he subsequently developed what would be known as the gramant principles now the gramant principles were a set of rules that explain why his prosthesis was effective and why other reverse ball and socket designs failed. Now the three principles that differ from the previously mentioned failed reverse semi-constraint uh, shoulder prosthesis are 1. A fixed center of rotation with congruent large joint surface that is cup on sphere instead of sphere on a flat surface as in the standard total shoulder arthroplasty to compensate for the deficient rotator cuff muscles and increase the stability 
The second principle was a medialized center of rotation which is located at the glenoid board, a prosthesis interface, in order to increase the deltoid lever arm to reduce the torque at the interface of prosthesis and glenoid. And third principle was loading of the humerus relative to the glenoid to increase the deltoid muscle tension. In 1998, US orthopedic surgeon Mark Frankel he began designing a reverse ball and socket prosthesis that did not adhere to the traditional Gravan's principle. He began protecting his device, the RSP that is reverse shoulder prosthesis in 2002. Many doubted the effectiveness of his design and suggested that it would lead to higher failure rates creating significant controversy and debate within the orthopedic community. After validating his theories with rigorous scientific studies and making several key modifications to his design, Frankel ultimately developed an implant. And it was able to address the shortcomings of Gramman style prosthesis while also showing excellent survivorship. Multiple studies have since gone on to demonstrate the advantages of his design principle and many of the modern generation reverse shoulder implants have mirrored them. Now coming to the indications of reverse shoulder arthroplasty. First, this form of shoulder replacement is utilized in situation where the conventional shoulder replacement surgery would lead to poor outcomes and high failure rate. Now you can see here in the first x-ray for the four part fracture of the proximal humerus, somebody has done a traditional hemi replacement arthroplasty which has obviously failed, it has uh, dislocated and has to be repaired using the reverse shoulder arthroplasty. The second indication is, though originally considered as a solvase procedure, as shown in this x-rays, but the failed uh, hemiarthroplasty being solvased using a reverse shoulder arthroplasty, the combination of improved design features and excellent clinical outcome data has led to the reverse shoulder replacement largely replacing the shoulder hemiarthroplasty for most of the indication. Now the reverse shoulder arthroplasty RSR was originally introduced to manage the rotator cuff arthroplasty, uh, rotator cuff arthropathies. Displaced three part or a four part fracture of the proximal humerus in elderly older than 70 years who cannot participate in rehabilitation program or who have a pre-existing Rotator cuff arthropathy is an, another indication for using reverse shoulder arthroplasty. You can see this in this particular x-ray, how this can be managed nicely using reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Now, nowadays, acute three or four part proximal humeral fractures in elderly where GT has a poor potential for healing and the bone quality is poor for the primary repair we are using the reverse shoulder arthroplasty as shown in this particular picture. Now the another indication is rotator cuff insufficiency equivalent and then finally the non-union or malunion of tuberosity following trauma or prior arthroplasty for example failed arthroplasty when all other options have been exhausted and in rheumatoid arthritis. Of course, only if the glenoid bone stock is sufficient. And what are the prerequisites for a patient? So the patient should have a low functional demand and he should have a physiological age more than 70 and there should be sufficient glenoid bone stock. Also, the deltoid muscle must be working and the axillary nerve must be intact. And hence, the contraindications for reverse shoulder arthroplasty would be 
important four contraindication one the deltoid deficiency because of axillary nerve palsy two bony acromion deficiency three glenoid osteoporosis and for the presence of active infection now coming to the advantages advantages of reverse shoulder arthroplasty over the normal anatomical shoulder arthroplasty so it is an emerging technique that obviates the need for tuberosity healing or rotator cuff function that is the biggest advantage the use of a convex glenoid hemispherical ball and a conical humerus that is articulating curve to reconstruct the glenohumeral joint the center of rotation is moved inferiorly and medialized that is another advantage and this allows the deltoid muscle to act on a longer fulcrum and have a more mechanical advantage you can see here how the things go and we can have a mechanical advantage for the deltoid muscle then the procedure is coming to the operative procedure the procedure can be performed either using a superior lateral incision or most commonly people prefer to use the deltopectoral incision you can see the deltopectoral incision in which the space between the deltoid muscle and the pectoralis muscle is developed now of course the subscapularis muscle you can see here one of the four muscles of the rotator cuff is typically detached to perform the operation now the native humerus and the scapula bone they are prepared using the precise machining to accommodate their respective implant at the end of the procedure the subscapularis muscle is typically repaired although some surgeons advocate not repairing this muscle due to the excess tension placed on it by the altered mechanics of the reverse shoulder design the it is worth noting that this is an implant specific phenomenon a certain reverse shoulder design disrupt the normal anatomical relationship significantly while others attempt to restore this closer to what is considered normal anatomy now as far as the implant is concerned the modern reverse shoulder implant consists of multiple parts as you can see in this particular features so on the scapula bone there is a metallic base plate that grows into the bone of the native glenoid and then there, there are screws or the pegs that holds this in place and a round metallic glenosphere a glenosphere component that is mated to the base plate this is the base plate via several different mechanisms and on the humerus bone there is a typical a conchoidal polythene liner that articulates with the convex glenosphere and this is attached to the stem humerus stem that grows into the native humerus or it is cemented into the place now coming to the complications of reverse shoulder arthroplasty as a note of caution complication rate after reverse shoulder replacement for the fracture treatment have been higher than those after reverse shoulder replacement for the cuff tear arthropathy reported complications include the dislocation you can see here how it has got dislocated or the tuberosity non union the nerve injuries the infection reflex sympathetic dystrophy the scapular notching see this is one of the important complication you can see in this here how the notching has occurred here how the notching has occurred so the scapular notching the proximal bone resorption and glenoid loosening these are all the complications of reverse shoulder arthroplasty now the cervix has classified the scapular notching into four grades as shown in the chart now grade one is limited to the scapular pillar grade two is in contact with the inferior screw of the base plate 
and grade 3 is beyond the inferior screw and grade 4 is it is extending under the base plate and approaching the central page. Now you can write your answer using this uh, note uh, in the following uh, slides. I am giving how you are supposed to write an ideal answer in your theory exam to get the maximum marks. You can use it, you can write down your own notes, prepare it and use this particular proforma to write your answer to get maximum marks in your theory exams. Now, if you have liked my this attempt to help you in your theory exams, please do subscribe my channel and do share this with all your colleagues, undergraduate and postgraduate students. Thank you.